So after my GTX 980 Ti set itself on fire the other week, I returned to my GTX 670 from many years ago and was consigned to it until I got a temporary 1080. And whilst running that 670, it got me wondering how well it would run games at a 2017 resolution, ultra-wide 1440p or 3440x1440. Obviously, 1080p is where this card was aimed for, and even then at release it wasn't exactly aimed for the highest end of gaming, sitting at the higher end of the affordable GPU scale. So I set out trying a list of 14 games that I thought would test this card out at ultra-wide 1440p, starting at very recent games and slowly working my way back over games from the past few years. The list is as follows, Battlefield 1, Dark Souls 3, The Division, Hitman, Just Cause 3, Rainbow Six Siege, Rise of the Tomb Raider, The Witcher 3, Battlefield 4, GTA 5, Bioshock Infinite, Sleeping Dogs The Definitive Edition, Alan Wake and Left 4 Dead 2, and I can safely say I was highly surprised at the result. This card fared far better than I thought it would. Now I'll preface this by saying the card is locked at 30fps 1440p recording and shadow play which means you won't quite get the same sense of FPS fluctuations that I got when playing, but that's just one of the limits of this card's age. However for most games I've got the FPS counter in the top left so you can see the live frame rate yourself. For Battlefield 1 especially, I got some serious recording issues where the recording simply has lost frames due to the extreme stress the card was under, and so the footage may look slightly worse than in fact it is, but I've done my best in editing to avoid these issues as much as possible to give you a fair taste. So starting with Battlefield 1, the game noticeably runs better when you're playing Domination or Team Deathmatch, playing smaller maps rather than massive skirmishes like Operations. It gives a noticeable impact to performance. Overall, it's kind of playable, but stutters on lowest settings, so it's no smooth experience. However, I still got good kills, and whilst I wouldn't recommend playing with this setup, well, I wouldn't really recommend playing with the setup in most cases anyway, but certainly here, the 670 simply cannot provide that minimum power needed. Dark Souls 3 is actually playable, fluctuating about the 30s, and whilst this is too low for my preference, especially for such a fast response gameplay title, it is rather impressive it runs quite as well as it does regardless. Some levels are a lot harder to run than others, but even in the catacombs where there is little to render, it does struggle, and some bosses with their intense movement and animations, especially with effects like fire, can cause the FPS to dive horrendously low, making an already extremely hard game even harder. The Division is definitely not playable. Whilst it's sadly bad enough it dips from the low 30s into the 20s, the worst defender is actually the momentary freezing which occurs a lot, and makes it unplayable even on the lowest settings. The game doesn't look too bad on these settings, but without the frame rate, no one's going to want to touch it anyway. Hitman doesn't fare any better. It doesn't even allow you to select 3440 by 1440 on a 670 unless you untick memory safeguard because it has no chance of running. It is laughably unplayable at about 15 FPS on lowest settings, but I expected no less as my 980 Ti struggled to run this at the same settings. Now for Just Cause 3, things start to get better. While still struggling, it actually was able to hold around 30 FPS even in intense explosive moments, and whilst yes, it's on lowest settings, it doesn't look horrendous whilst it does it. Unfortunately, it did crash after the first 20 minutes of playing, and I got a number of weird glitches that I've never experienced before, but yeah, it played decently. Rainbow Six Siege is very playable as well, maintaining a 50fps average on lowest settings. Graphically it looks okay, and I was actually able to play well, but the mouse input feels very laggy in a game you need accurate, fast reactions for. Also, I didn't test the favela map, but this is infamously much harder to run than any other map, so I wouldn't be surprised if it pushes fps down to the 30s, or potentially lower. Rise of the Tomb Raider continues this pretty good FPS streak. It is also pretty playable, sticking close to 30 FPS or slightly higher at all times on lowest settings. The problem though is it does look horrendous thanks to the lack of any real lighting. This is certainly the worst defender for why the game looks so harsh. In action scenes the FPS will easily dip below 30 FPS but on the whole it can be run on a 670 but unlike the titles I've already deemed playable I would say this is not playable even though the FPS would appear alright simply because the graphics are so jarring. 
The Witcher 3, again, pretty much totally playable. It plays like on a console, really. It held in the high 20s, low 30s at all times. Locking 30 FPS would be vital for a comfortable experience. It doesn't look too bad on lower settings either. However, it's just that the game looks so beautiful on ultra settings that you're aware of the low quality more than other titles. Battlefield 4 is a brilliant title, very playable, 60fps on medium settings, it plays beautifully. Smoke is an FPS killer, and obviously different maps will have different FPS demands, but yeah, overall it's a very safe title. EA are fantastic with their Battlefield series at PC optimization, and it shows here. There is still a big community playing as well, so you can easily jump into a game. I was very impressed with this, as I still wouldn't call Battlefield 4 an old game. GTA 5, this was the big letdown of them all. The game literally will not load into the world even on lower settings, it just crashes. <laughs> Obviously not great. For Bioshock Infinite, it's extremely playable. Normal settings give a steady 60fps even in high intensity moments. It looks as beautiful as ever and controls well. Being, I think I'm right in saying this, the most owned game on Steam or something equally impressive, it's fantastic it plays so well. Sleeping Dogs is also very playable with a steady 60fps, only dipping under a bit in heavy action scenes, all admittedly on lower settings, but it doesn't look too bad whilst doing it. I really enjoyed this game originally, and playing it again here makes me hope a sequel materialises sometime. Alan Wake, a fantastic PC game, and it shows here. It plays well, holds about 50fps on lower settings, and high intensity moments don't hit fps with any real effect. An easy recommendation to play with this one. Left 4 Dead 2 is the last game, and being significantly older than any other game on the list, it's no surprise that this runs superbly on higher settings, with no issue whatsoever. I love this game. Slaying millions of zombies all at once doesn't stop you rocking FPS numbers far in excess of 60. Now a point to note looking back over this testing is I did it all on a G-Sync monitor, which means I was able to avoid the typical horrendous screen tearing that is synonymous with non-G-Sync or FreeSync screens. And frankly, if you can afford a G-Sync monitor, you're unlikely to be running on a GTX 670, so it's not an entirely fair representation of the final outcome because you're not seeing any of the screen tearing. However, I felt watching a full video with game after game filled with screen tearing wasn't something you would exactly love to watch. All in all, I'd say that whilst I can't recommend gaming at ultra-wide 1440p on a GTX 670 on modern games, for old games, say 2013 and prior, it actually can be done very well. Obviously, as this test shows, different games have varying levels of optimization quality that will affect the final outcome, but yeah, this early 2012 card fares far better than I would have predicted at pushing so many pixels in modern titles. Yes, you're frequently confined to the 30fps range or even lower, and some games stutter or won't even start, though that's very rare, and you will be most likely playing on the lowest graphic settings, but for £60 or roughly $70, depending on where you look, this card is able to provide a basic ultra-wide 1440p experience, which is a shocking fraction of the cost of something like the 1080 Ti, which stands at £700 or $700 or more, and in simply looking to run on the same resolution but just ultra settings 60 fps plus i genuinely found this rather an interesting test and i don't know about you guys but i'm honestly pleasantly surprised at this card's performance let me know what you guys thought in the comments did you guys expect this kind of performance or does it surprise you too anyway this was just a bit of fun to give me something to do while i didn't have a powerful gpu so don't worry i'm not going to be going back to a 670 for gaming Give this video a like if you liked it and subscribe for lots more content. I thought this would just be a bit of fun to really push my 670 as hard as I could. For anything 21 by 9 or game review related, then check out my channel or head over to my Wide as Fuck website and I'm sure there'll be something of interest there. If not, leave a comment down below of what you'd like to see and I'll try and cover it. And if you'd like to support the channel, the links to my Patreon page in the description and Amazon affiliate links are there too. See you later.